So England have beaten Wales, fantastic. Um, it feels a bit weird to be honest, because uh, Wales pretty much didn't turn up for 60 minutes, um, and then England fell apart for 20 minutes. England have won, they've won the whole thing. Um, really good tournament to win, because as I've been saying all along, Wales are by far the best players, player for player, um, and they didn't even compete for 60 minutes. It was weird, really weird. Um, I don't really know what happened. They don't know what happened. And the look on their faces is a bit priceless, to be honest, because uh, they know they, they could have won that if they had played well. Um, but anyway, it's not taken away from England. They played well, not great, but okay. It's not gonna be a Southern Hemisphere side, but a win's a win. Um, and the positives really, and I'll cycle all the player scores up in the corner as normal. Um, big positive was that front five, very dominant at set piece. Um, again, actually, they've been pretty dominant all tournament, but against the best team in the tournament, completely dom dominant in that first half. Front row did really well. Uh, we'll talk about the second rows in a minute. Um, I've been giving Joe Marler a really hard time, haven't I, in these videos, saying he doesn't do enough around the park. Well, he had his best game for England around the park. I really thought he stepped up. Unfortunately, he's gone and spoiled it. He's been saying dodgy stuff about Samson Lee. He's definitely gonna get banned for that. There's no way they're gonna let him get away with that. And uh, maybe a sighting with the elbow as well, although I don't think that's, that's as bad. Um, so he spoiled it really there because he played really well and I'm pretty sure he'll be banned for next week. And I'll get to see Maka, Maka Vinopula start, who I've been saying should be starting, but on the performance of Joe Marlon, maybe I was wrong, but at least we'll see. Um, but it's a pity we don't see Marler on the bench for next week either. Hartley had his best game, I think. He's been consistent throughout, and again, I've given him a hard time in these videos because I don't think he gives a huge amount around the park, but he did um, for 60 minutes, well, for when he was on the pitch on Saturday. Massive mistake taking him off, and uh, Eddie Jones admitted that. Luke Cowan Dickey, so inexperienced, came on um, and... Cool, his defence for Faletau's try was appalling. It's absolutely awful. I'll show you the freeze frame here. Here's Cowan Dickey defending on the inside. He's got a tricky decision. He's got Faletau outside, um, lined up against Danny Kerr, and then an inside runner, and he doesn't know who to take. Fine. So he hedges his bets, he stands in between. Um, but then the pass goes to Faletau, and his decision's a bit clearer. I need to help Danny Kerr or this guy's gonna score and you have to leave the inside to your defense coming across. Um, or you go and take the inside maybe, which is the wrong decision, but at least a decision's better than no decision. And Cowan Dickey makes no decision. He just stands there, flaps his arms around, uh, doesn't get anywhere near Faletau and Faletau cruises over. Um, good finish from Faletau, but what is Cowan Dickey doing? He has seriously blotted his co copybook there. Um, he, he's in trouble, actually. They'll probably give him another chance, but Tom Youngs must be sitting at home going, well, what about me? I should be there. And he probably should be on merit, but uh, they gave the youngster a chance and he's really mucked up there. Um, so, yeah, Jones made uh, changes which maybe contributed to England slipping off. Um, but Wales' try, North's try, uh, was brilliant. Uh, the one where um, Liam Williams burst through, that amazing offload to Jonathan Davis, who passed outside on the move to North. Fantastic try, and they must be thinking, why didn't we start playing like that? Okay, going on to the second rows, uh, amazing. Um, I knew a toe Jay would be amazing, and he was. The guy is just on a different level athletically with everybody else on that pitch. Maybe Toby Faletau is definitely close, but toje has got the power, pace, got everything. And his skills are really good and his decisions are good. Future England captain for sure, it's gotta be. Touch wood, um, he won't get any injuries because he is gonna start all day long. Um, even in the back row, I think, um, you know, you could put Launchbury in there and easily put him in at six. Um, Rob Shaw and Haskell, again, played out of their skin. They really did. But as I've been saying in all the videos, I just don't think they've got enough potential there to be a world-class player that's gonna beat the Southern Hemisphere. But they gave everything. I, you know, I'm not slating them for that. I'm just saying we need a little bit more quality, I think, a little bit more talent in there. Um, and I think at the end of the year, Nathan Hughes is the guy that I would bring into that back row, potentially. 
I mean, just think about it. The likes of Cruz, Atoje, Hughes, and Billy Vanapola as ball carriers, then that's probably the best ball carrying um, back five in the world, maybe. I'll say it there. Definitely not the right balance, but at least it's something. Uh, a scrum half, again, I've been giving Ben Youngs a really hard time, haven't I? Um, because he's been slow off the base of that ruck, but he wasn't today. Fair play, he stepped up, and from minute one, he was sharp off the base of the ruck or the scrum. It made such a difference, it really did. So he can do it, because I know he's quick enough, he, he's just got to do it consistently. Um, I'm still probably edging Danny Kerr, I thought he came on and did well, um, but those two are looking really good. Ford and Farrell, just because England won, I'm still not buying the fact that they are a long-term prospect. Ford's running game, just so non-existent. There's times where he gets isolated and all he needs to do is go on a jinking run, uh, make some yards, make something happen, and he just folds himself up and stays still and gets hit, and it's just nothing really. And then Farrell obviously doesn't offer any running either, although his kicking's amazing and distributing is good. Um, I just don't see it. Tua Lange came on and I was looking at his athleticism and, and he looked fine, he looked really sharp actually. That tackle that didn't put North out into touch, but the touch judge thought he did, was a great cover tackle. Um, have a look at this picture. Um, Tua Lange actually comes from the inside of three men and as soon as his man has not got the ball, has got rid of the ball, he then covers in behind really quickly to make that tackle on North. So it's not like he was coming across anyway. He set his man up and then covered in behind, which is really good athleticism. Yeah, he was fresh coming on, but that, that's a good play, um, and it won England the match, maybe. Joseph is disappointing, isn't it? He's definitely still the right choice, I think, but every game he hasn't had that space, or it just hasn't happened for him. He hasn't looked bad at all, um, and in any, if anything, it's really tested his defence, and he stood right up to that. Um, so we know what he can do in attack, and we've seen now in this Six Nations his defence is good. You know, I'm sure we'll see something very soon from him. Back feet were great. Um, really good. I was a little disappointed that uh, Brown didn't go for the corner when he made that break. He was very indecisive there, but apart from that, really good. Anthony Watson challenged for the ball in the air really well, although he did lose it twice after he caught it, which he'll be very disappointed with. Uh, in the future, I think I'm starting to see him been good enough now to play 15 for England. Uh, Brown's got a year or two left, maybe, um, before he starts just getting a little bit too old, to be honest. And then you can move Watson into 15, and they still need to find a, a winger or two to go with that, I think. So anyway, in summary, England super solid in the set piece. Um, really good patterns of play, very unpredictable patterns of play. What they did a lot actually was go down the blind side, not just once, but repeatedly to really upset the Wales defence. I mean, sometimes you go with a flow and occasionally you tend to go down the blind side, but England had specifically decided, I think, to go down the blind side a lot, especially to Cuthbert, who, without being too mean, which is hard, he looked like a guy who'd won a competition to play for Wales. He was awful. I mean, his defence was terrible, his catching was terrible, didn't see him much in attack. How can Gatlin pick him ahead of someone like Matthew Morgan? It's crazy. Um, even Shane Williams was saying, got to pick Morgan. He's the Welsh wizard on the sidelines, not even in the squad. Get him in there. Crazy. I mean, you've got such good players in that Welsh team. Um, why on earth are you putting Cuthbert in there at the moment? Terrible decision from Gatlin there to play him, I think. Um, and the other bad decision, like I said, was Jones to put on the sub so early, especially Cameron Dickey, who was pretty rubbish, to be honest. Um, England needs to win the Grand Slam now, otherwise it definitely will be a little bit of a downer, I think, after winning the championship like that. Um, but I think they can do it. I think they will do it. Little word on France. They are weird. Uh, really weird. They've... Uh, had one French coach, Saint-André, who's gone for structure, straight up the middle, no flair, boring, predictable, is never going to beat a really good side. And then they've gone to another coach who has hardly any structure, really unpredictable, but a modern defence will just eat that up. It's not good enough. It will score good tries, but it just won't be good enough in the long run. I think you saw it a little bit when Brian Ashton coached England in 2007. 
He reportedly said to England, go and play heads up rugby, don't have much structure, that's the way he liked to coach and in theory it's fantastic but it just doesn't work in modern rugby when these defences are, are just ready for that and they'll pounce on you and punish you. Um, so just somewhere in the middle France, that'll do. A coach like Clive Woodward would actually be perfect for them but there's no way they'd listen to anything he said. So I can't see France beating England, it could be a good game because there's nothing to lose for them. It, the ball could be going all over the place. It'll be exciting anyway. Um, and after that game, I'll do a final sum up on the Six Nations. So I'll pick my first Lions 15 for next year, which will be fun. Uh, even though Wales have blown this championship, I'm pretty sure I'll put a lot of Welsh guys in there. So don't worry about that, Wales fans. But there'll be more English players than there would have been at the beginning of the championship. So that's good. Please do subscribe. It is free to subscribe. People have asked me that on YouTube. It's free. You just create yourself an account and subscribe so my videos pop up straight away. And then you can comment and tell me that I'm wrong, I'm right, put down alternative selections, alternative scores. That's what I want to see so you can get involved. Um, look forward to seeing you after the France game and hopefully England have got a grand slam. Until then, enjoy your rugby and I'll see you later.